Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for coming today. I'm Serena Wales from the serverless team uh, here at Twilio. And I'm here today to talk about building bots with Twilio Studio. So everyone knows that bots are the new apps. Bots are the hot new thing. Even Microsoft thinks so. Um, but similar to building apps, building bots is also a lot of work. Uh, if you're a developer, you have to set up your server. You have to write your code. You have to test it locally. You have to figure out how to host it. You have to debug it, and so on and so forth. And if you're building bots, you have some specific problems. You have to keep track of the state or where in a conversation someone is. And you have to figure out how all the different APIs that you want to use to communicate work. So we spent some time thinking about how do we make it easier to avoid as many of these steps as possible and also write less code. And we took another step back. And we looked at the subject more, much like an 18th century painter. And we came up with Studio, a visual development environment that frees up your time to let you do what you love. So we started this little history. We started this project in January of 2017 at Tweak, which is our company's internal hack week where engineers get to work on whatever they want to. And we started introducing it to customers in September of that year. We spent about another year continuing to work on it and becoming confident enough to bring it to general availability, which means that we stand behind it in terms of its uptime, its feature set, and its reliability. And that's where we are now. So there are two parts to Studio. The canvas, where you can drag and drop widgets that are functions of work, like sending a message, running a function, or making a web request. And then the platform, which takes your logic and runs it every time it's triggered by an API call, a message, or a phone call. That is no longer working. Cool. Uh, it works across almost all of Twilio's products. Um, and Twilio has a lot of products. So that's actually quite helpful. Um, so I found out recently that the rapper and singer Pitbull is also a motivational speaker. He's touring next year with Tony Robbins. Buy your tickets now. Um, and I thought that people might want to be regularly inspired by Pitbull's wisdom. Um, that, that could be a good bot to have. Uh, so I built a Pitbull bot. Um, and you can take out your phone right now and text into this number to try it out. So. And while you're doing that, let me tell you a little bit about how I built it. So this is what my studio flow looks like. Uh, so using Studio, you can send, you can do different things depending on different kinds of triggers. So you can see here, this is triggered by an incoming message. Uh, we handle responses as they come in. Uh, you can send out different messages based on things like if a user responded to a message or not. And if you have slightly more complicated logic, then you can use the split widget to split on things like what someone else texted in using regular expressions, text match match matching. Uh, or either responses from other APIs. So if you wanted to use the autopilot API, for example, um, then you could return whatever intelligence that gives you. Um, so I also really like Pitbull's The Dogs. Um, and I was kind of on a bot-making role, so I thought I'd just keep going on in that vein. Um, and I thought people really like dog pictures, but you always have to bother your friends who have dogs to send you pictures. So what if there was a bot that could do that for you? Um, so you can check this number to try this one out. If your phone is, again, not already out, take it out and try it out. Um, so this is my Pitbull the dog flow. Um, and as you can see here, it's a lot simpler, but it shows how easy it is to build a bot using Studio. Uh, so one thing to note here is that if Studio doesn't have the functionality that you need, uh, we have another product called Functions, uh, which you can use to add any customized code that you want. So as long as it's in JavaScript. Uh, so this is what my uh, function looks like. So in it, all I'm doing is getting a picture of a dog, um, giving it a name, and then I'm returning that back to my studio flow, where it's available in the context, as we call it. So then I can return that to the user. Um, we've been really excited by what people have been building with Studio so far. We see every type of Twilio use case being successful uh, with Studio, from single widget flows that simply forward calls, so if you want to hide your number for whatever reason, uh, to large flows that handle entire business processes and represent entire applications. So my favorite from this slide is the hotline, 
that someone built so his wife can call and he can say, I love her. Um, and it also tracks for stats because you always want to know what the NPS score of your relationship is. So we also have a lot of large customers who are using Studio, so it's not just for side projects like the one I've demoed today. Uh, this is a quote from the CTO of one of the largest contact centers in Brazil. Uh, they handle thousands of calls every hour, um, and they interact with their CRM. Uh, they have multiple levels of branching. Their flow is actually too big to fit on the screen, so I'm not even going to try to show it. Uh, but Studio does scale. Um, and we also see a lot of large nonprofits, so um, and Twilio.org customers, that are using Studio to make a difference faster. So one global nonprofit used Studio for activating sponsorships. And with Studio managing a two-way SMS process, they saw a 15% increase in conversion over what they had been doing with email before. Um, and again, with nonprofits, we see it, a lot of different things they're using for it, from things like reaching out uh, to elections, both here and abroad, um, as well as talking to the people that they're serving. And meanwhile, the team has been focused on making it as simple, as easy to use, and as reliable as possible for all of our customers. Even cats can do it. Um, so you can use Studio for free now. You get 1,000 executions a month for free, so it's perfect for small projects. And after that, it's a fraction of a penny. Um, so we also have Clement and Tristan here today um, to tell you about what they're doing with Studio. And I'd like to bring them on up. Thank you, Serena. Well, first, I come overseas to see you guys. I come from France, and I'm a software engineer. But way, way beyond that software engineer, I'm an entrepreneur who created his first startup back 13 years ago. And remember this day, 13 years ago, because it's really important. <coughs> I had the chance to be mentored by the best. And nowadays, my job is to give counsel to startups, help them to find solutions. For finding these solutions, the idea here is just to attend some meetups. And when I talk about meetups, more especially one kind of event. This kind of event is the well-known Startup Weekends. Is everybody here didn't have heard at all about Startup Weekends? OK, Startup Weekends, for those who don't know, is just groups of pure pupils, groups of adults, whatever, who gather together for one weekend, 54 hours, trying to build startups. And then they try to pitch in front of VC and get some prizes. Globally, here, here's the last one I uh, take part to. <coughs> it held in Lille. It was about uh, France and Belgium. And what happens in these weekends is that at the very end, especially about the Q&A session, well, these groups come to me with one dead simple question. Do you want to be my CTO? And as you guess, most of the time, I just answer no. They're sad, definitely. And they come to me with this dead simple question for one reason. This reason is, I don't know how to code. 13 years ago, this might be a problem. But nowadays, when they came to me with this question, I can proudly say to them that, well, nowadays you don't need to know how to code to create your minimum viable product and get your first thousand customers. The only thing you need to know is you have to read this manual. As a software engineer, and like most of you here, in my childhood, I was very fond of one thing. I was very fond of playing with Legos. If I was fond of playing with Legos, it's because nowadays I consider that software engineering is like playing Legos. I mean, like in the kid's tale of the Three Little Pigs, where our tiny character builds houses from bare material. I mean, straw balls, wooden plank, and bricks. I'm not sure about that, but I think that the guy with bricks wins at the end. Well, nowadays, we can build startup with these same raw material. Lego bricks. The red one, I got some here. We are at Signal for cloud communication. Then we will run business. So we need a payment break. 
I got blue bricks here to play with payments. Then, sometimes we need communication which is not handled by Twilio. I mean internal communication. Here, we got our violet brick. I mean the best, probably, internal tool communication, Slack. And finally, sometimes we need to go back to the ancient world. So we need another type of bricks. Here is a blue one, latest Twilio acquisition, SendGrid, for sending emails. So let's take all those bricks together, taking the red one, taking the blue one, the purple one, this way, and the light blue one, if it works, it will, I think so, yep, sometimes difficult, and we will build something amazing, we'll build an intelligent bot using the latest Twilio tools. Studio, Stripe, Slack, and SendGrid. We'll build an intelligent bot. As I said, I come from France, and I really be here in town, in the Bay Area, for one specific reason. I'm a tech guy, and what's happening when I come here in San Francisco, I can appreciate that whatever you want to do, it could be ordering a car, ordering cupcakes right on stage, then just ordering some uh, cloth washing, or just a handyman, then you can request whatever you want just by pushing a button. But what if I want to stay healthy? What if I want to drink some smoothie? I'm very thrilled to introduce you tonight, today, sorry, it's not yet night, <coughs> My latest venture, Blender. A smoothie away keeps your mother-in-law away. Saying that smoothie will be a smooth e-flow, which will allow you to order smoothie right from your phone, meaning that you'll get some text to get the size and get the ingredients. Then to a Twilio function will run to compute the pricing, the customer will accept or reject it, will trigger a call to capture credit card information. Finally, the order will be dispatched using Slack, and you, the customer will be informed by text that his order is ready to pick up. I'm sure you're now really thirsty, so at this time, let's go for a very small demo. Can we switch computer? Is it possible to switch to have my my other laptop? Thank you. <clears throat> so here is my flow. It might be kind of complicated, but you'll see that finally it's extremely simple. The first thing you need is getting an input message. So this input message will, con will have a tiny code which will detect that you want to order a smoothie. Then we'll ask for the size, and we'll go through a split widget which will detect the size. Once you get this size, we'll ask for five ingredients. These five ingredients will be analyzed by a small Twilio function which is just bare JavaScript. It's the very minimum to learn. It's the very, very first thing when you do a MOOC online when you learn JavaScript. It's just split, split string. It's just ordering stuff and getting information. Then, once you get this information, uh, once you get the pricing, then we will send this pricing to the user. Once the, pri once the user will accept it, we'll simply trigger a call. This call is kind of awful. Nowadays, you'll have the pay verb. Serena will talk a little bit of, uh, about it later on. So we'll get here the credit card number, the expiry card, the expiry date, the CVC code, and finally, we'll process the, uh, we'll process the payment using another function. And here, even it looked like it's a tiny, difficult to understand, well, it's just 
copy and paste from Stripe documentation. You just go to the docs, click on create a charge, click on your framework, and just copy and paste the code. That's easy, definitely. Finally, we process, so we process the payment, so we got the information. We will dispatch the order using Slack. That's the most difficult part. But once more, you got all the documentation available online to code your own stuff. It's really simple. You'll see that in a moment. Then here, this function is in charge of sending the, the information to Slack using a title, using a color to detect it, using uh, some buttons here and there. And finally, once you get the information, we will notify users that their order is ready to pick up. We can then ask for an email to send an invoice. The function is here. As you see, it's just 70 lines of JavaScript. We can send the invoice just by copy and pasting the code provided by SendGrid documentation. And some of you may know that coding an email is definitely difficult. But using the latest tool, which is provided to us, we can just drag and drop stuff, like in Studio. We can just place our image, place some placeholder to hold variables, and then click OK. It's generate the code for us, and the mail is sent automatically. Can I switch back to the slide? OK, so before I let you test the system, let's make a very quick recap of what we've done. This system, as Serena said a couple of minutes ago, is all serverless. You don't have to set up a server. You don't have to hire DevOps, which is the worst job on Earth, on my guess. Then, it's frankly simple. I mean, it's less, all the functions together is less than 300 lines of code. Who can pretend running a startup just by writing 300 design lines of code? Then, it took me three hours to make all this flow. That means that during a startup weekend or during a whole week or month, you can improve drastically this system using autopilot, using proxy, using whatever tools which is provided, using even Algolia if you want to search for stuff, using voice or text, whatever. So you can drastically improve this system just by plugging some other information. It's really customizable. Finally, and this is not least last, but not the, le yeah, where is it here? This system just cost me 20 bucks, OK? I can just take, go to the ATM and run this startup. If I told you about 13 years ago, what should we do back in the past? We had to create our own payment system. Stripe is only eight years old. We had to build our own SMS system. Twilio is only 10 years old. So this is just amazing. And what I say is that this system is live. If you want to order your fresh custom and almost fake smoothie, sorry, then you can just go and visit blender.live. You can take it. It will redirect you to, uh, to your message app, and you go through the flow. Tristan, your turn. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you hear me OK? Yeah. Uh, great. So my name is Tristan. I work at Square on our developer relations team. Uh, so that means I get up every morning thinking about how can I make Square's developer products easier to use, more interesting, more exciting, uh, and help developers who work in the e-commerce and custom point of sale space uh, build better tools. And so one of the tools that I work with is something that we call Square Checkout. And so Square Checkout can be embodied by this complicated flow diagram, but uh, it's a traditional kind of off-site checkout experience. So you, know, you might be at an e-commerce store trying to buy something online. They'll redirect you to a Square-hosted page. You put in all your credit card details there and get redirected back to your site. Um, it works pretty well, but it also is really good for you know, headless situations where you don't have a, a front-end store or an e-commerce site. 
you know, situations where you might uh, perhaps be using a chatbot. Um, and so, you know, I was thinking about building out this demo. Uh, what are some of the pros of chatbots? Well, you know, I don't really text that much. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but chatbots are great at it. You know, they're always there. They never sleep. They don't get tired. Uh, you know, chatbot can be there selling your products 24-7. Um, I think that some of the challenges, though, with this technology is that people think they're kind of complicated to build. Uh, and that's not really the case. As uh, I'm about to show you, um, it's actually pretty easy. Um, and so thinking about uh, what, uh, make sure this demo looks good. Fingers are crossed. Here we go. Um, and so thinking about this demo, I used to have really long hair. Um, my hair's a lot shorter now, and so my head gets cold, not really in this room, but in other places, and uh, I want hats, and so in my fictional store, I'm going to sell some hats. Uh, and so I'm just going to jump over here into Studio, and I'm going to create a brand new flow. I'll just call this flow Signal. And we're going to start from scratch. And as that opens up, uh, you know, when somebody texts my number looking to buy a hat, whether they, you know, see my Instagram ad with my phone number or, uh, you know, maybe I have a billboard on the 101, uh, you know, people are going to want to get a very specific type of hat. So I'm going to ask them a qualifying question. So, you know, the first kind of widget I'm going to add in here is uh, the send and wait for reply. And I'm going to ask them, you know, what size hat do you want? You know, it's awesome that you want to uh, buy a hat. But what size would you like? And then I'll give them a little hint about some of the good options. Uh, my head's pretty large, so this one's for me. Uh, so I'm going to save that, uh, add that incoming message trigger, stick that over there. And then uh, when we get that response back from somebody, we're going to have to you know, figure out if they actually told us the size. And so that's a great use case for the uh, split widget. So we're going to take that, and we're going to split on that incoming message from our first send and reply. So we'll just find that inbound body. And oop, drag that over. And then we'll just configure the split widget to chest for the sizes that we're looking for. And so if our message contains the word, oh, I don't know, maybe small, uh, we might also want to look for something like the next best size in the world, medium. And then we'll add one more for our large cranium friends. If they text back something that says large. So now we're, we're able to see, you know, if somebody gets this message, texts us back a size, we'll be able to figure out if they gave us a, a size that we understand correctly. But, uh, you know, this is kind of the happy path. In a lot of cases, people aren't going to be you know, going down that happy path. So what if they forget about our first message? Maybe they just text us and then they get busy buying coffee. Uh, we'll, we'll just add another extension here if they, if they don't reply immediately. And so that one will be a uh, follow-up like, hey, did you forget about your hat? And then we'll just ask them again what size they want. Oops. Giving them those options again in case they forgot. And then we'll also need to be checking the output, uh, or at least the, the reply from that message. And so we can just copy this split widget here, drag that on in, and we'll need to change the variable that it's checking. Instead of that first send and reply, we'll be checking the second one. And then, you know, there's a lot of conditions where, you know, maybe they'll text something back that our chatbot just doesn't understand. And we're going to have to tell them that, oh, I do not understand what you're saying. And so we'll give them a quick little sorry. I didn't get that. And so that'll be just a, a message that we send back there. If we get no condition matches on our first couple splits, then we'll just pipe that into a message that we don't understand. And in fact, I don't want to lose that sale just because I didn't quite understand them. So I'll just text them again about what sizes there are. Uh, maybe they'll understand it the second time. And then if we do you know, kind of go down these happy paths where we get a 
customer telling us about what kind of hat size they want. Uh, we're going to pipe that into a function. And so, you know, like you've seen before, Twilio functions are a great way to extend some of the functionality in your Studio flows with uh, other APIs or other tools. And so I'm just going to pipe in all of these uh, into this function. And, you know, luckily for me, I already have the function written out. And so I'm just going to pipe it into this checkout function that I have. But before I jump over to that function, I'm going to actually add some function parameters too. And so, you know, these are kind of context variables that uh, our function will be given about the current flow. So it'll be able to make better decisions uh, when executing its code. And so the first one uh, I'm going to add is this message variable. And so uh, I'm going to make that equal to our inbound message body. And so I'm just going to scroll down here, find our inbound body there. Um, and then I'm going to add another one that has the uh, number that the text is coming from. And so that's just going to be the, the trigger message from parameter. And so I have this you know, pretty simple flow. We have a, uh, an incoming message trigger. We're looking at the first in a reply, asking this qualifying question for our e-commerce site. And then, uh, you know, if they tell us something that we understand, we're going to pipe them out to, to make that sale. If they don't, we're, you know, we're going to try to get a little bit more information from them. So I'm just going to go and publish this flow. Oh, 47 revisions, easy. And then I'm going to pop over into my runtime environment to look at my function. And so this is the checkout function that our end users are going into. Uh, you can see that it's kind of your, your basic function stuff. Uh, I'm looking for valid Twilio signals. Our Twilio signatures um, in my function. I'll just pop into uh, the brand new full screen mode. See that okay? Uh, make that a little bit bigger. And so you can see that uh, you know the first thing I'm doing is taking in a couple of the external libraries that we're using. I actually have a couple uh, secrets in my function stored as uh, environment variables. So when setting up my function, I was able to keep them uh, and store them inside uh, an environment variable. And then the, the two variables that we set in the flow, that message and number, I'm pulling them out here as well. And so then I just do some, some basic authorization. I build out this uh, order request, you know, what, what that end order is going to look like. And then I do a little switch statement. Uh, you know, if they asked for a small hat, well, I'm going to give them a small hat, a line item. Uh, a big hat, you know, it's going to be a medium or a large one. Um, and then if, you know, if we don't have any of that information, you know, maybe something's wrong and, and uh, I'll text them back that, oh, there's a mistake here. And then uh, at the end, I'm going to build this checkout request and then use some Twiml to uh, build the messaging response back. And so uh, the end user should then see, you know, awesome, you can face your checking out right over here and then uh, pass that checkout page URL to them. And so the very last thing to do is then uh, take this studio flow and assign it to my phone number. And so I have a phone number right here. And I'm going to look for the, the messaging. So whenever a message comes in, I'm just going to put it into that signal flow and save that. And then as I reconfigure laptop should be pretty good. So uh, I would encourage you to try it for yourself. Uh, if you want to give it a text, uh, you should see something sort of like this, where you can uh, you know, say, hey, I want to buy a hat, or how are you doing? Hey, good looking. Uh, you know, say, oh, you know, I hope you're looking for a cool hat. Uh, what size would you like? And then I'm, you know, I'm jibber jabbering about how big my head is. And then you get a nice URL about uh, where to check out. And then you can complete your payment on there. Uh, you can see that you know, my number's in there. It has the line item for the size of hat that I want. Um, and all that information is just there, uh, all through SMS. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about this project, uh, there's a good blog post about it. Um, or if you want to learn more about Square Checkout in general, uh, here's this nice short URL or you can come talk to me after, I'll be available. But uh, for the last part, we'll be hearing more from Serena. Thank you. Um, so before we finish, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what's coming up next for Studio. Um, 
if any of you are using it already. Um, it is not flying cars. Unfortunately, that's going to be next year's signal. Uh, but we do have new widgets. Um, so our goal with Studio is to integrate, as I mentioned earlier, with as many Twilio products as possible. And that includes the thing that, things that we are launching today. So we will now be able to use Pay uh, directly in your Studio flow, so you won't have to write formal for it. We'll be able to customize how it works. We'll also be rolling out a new autopilot widget, so you'll be able to automatically use that functionality as well in your flows, as well as a bunch of specific uh, flex-specific widgets. So uh, you can use Studio as the IVR or as the bot layer uh, in your flex installation, um, and we want to make that as easy as possible. Uh, we also have a bunch of new features that we'll be introducing. Um, as customers have been using Studio over the past year, uh, there are some things that are missing, um, as happens with products, and we're going to be working on fixing that. So two of the things that we have upcoming uh, are the ability to import and export your flows. So if you want to share them across projects or even across accounts, you'll be able to do that. Um, and also the ability to set variables in your flow. So as you saw in Tristan's flow, he had to copy and paste the split widget twice to basically do the same thing because it was uh, doing it on a different variable. So you'll be able to kind of reduce the complexity that you have in your flows with that. Um, and then we'll also be introducing a new onboarding experience. Uh, so we've heard from some customers that Studio can be a little bit complicated to try and figure out how it works, how these things fit together, um, and we want to fix that problem. Um, so that's going to be coming on board too, just like this dog. Um, so to get back to my original somewhat forced analogy, um, in some ways Studio actually is like an 18th century workroom. If you can imagine it and you can draw it, you can build it in Studio. And we can't wait to see what you build. So thank you for coming.